mean, I like rock, I like heavy metal, alternative, punk, lots of electronica stuff, jazz. I was the biggest Prince fan. I still am the, the biggest Prince fan in Jamaica. And my high school yearbook talks about me loving Prince and my ambition in life is to work for Prince. Music is a huge part of the creative process for me. And I think, I don't know, it may be a Jamaican thing that so much of what we do is to a soundtrack. Sometimes it really is just background. But I think I also like hearing music being created while I'm trying to create something. It's a great way of being inspired without necessarily being distracted. I was born in St. Andrew, Jamaica, and I grew up in a community called Independence City. I grew up pretty suburban, you know, two cars, two parents, raised by TV in the 70s. You know, it's Twinkies, Cupcakes, and, and Starsky and Hutch on TV. It's very, it was very American, actually, even though um, this is in the middle of Jamaica. When I was a child, I mean, Marley was already a superstar. He was somebody already on tour. He was somebody who wasn't really there. So even by then, he was this icon. But Marley remains this sort of, not just a huge influence, but he has his way of stealing the show wherever he shows up. He's always in, you know, he's always in the background or he's always in the foreground as a, a guiding force. And, um, you know, he certainly took over my novel and that wasn't even the intention. Thank you. Tonight, we're joined by Marlon James, an award-winning writer. He is here to read and discuss his latest novel, A Brief History of Seven Killings, now in paperback. And as I'm sure many of you have already heard, it just won a 2015 Man Booker Prize. So. The Man Booker Prize is an international literary prize. In the whole sort of global scheme of things, it is a big deal. It's the biggest and probably the most famous of all the literary prizes. Certainly the, the biggest literary prize recognizing a singular work. I'm gonna read uh, a few sections from this novel. If you haven't heard about it, it's about loosely based on what happened to the men who tried to kill Bob Marley and the men and the women who were in the way. A Brief History of Seven Killings, it's really about how a singular event can have such dire and long-lasting consequences on hundreds of people who may not even know they're, they're connected to it. One of the judges said it's Booker's first crime novel. <laughs> and I actually really like that. There are quite a few characters. There are actually 76 characters. Not all of them make it to the end. It's, it's, it's not brief, and there are a little more than seven killings. Jamaica is a small island, and even if you never experience violence, you still hear of it. You're still living with the rumor of it. You're still living with the fear that it might happen to you. How do you bury a man? Put him in the ground or stomp out his fire? They give the singer an honor on his deathbed, the Order of Merit. The Black Revolutionary joins the Order of British Squires and Knights, Babylon in Excelsis Dale. A fire that lights up Zimbabwe, Angola, Mozambique, and South Africa, doused out by two letters, O and M. Now he's one of us, but the singer is sly. I've written three novels, and my first novel is called John Crow's Devil. I couldn't get it published. I had sent it out to actually 78 publishers and agents, and they all said no. Then that book got published, and I just kept writing. The Book of Night Woman, my second, was published in 2009. And my third novel, A Brief History of Seven Killings, was published in 2014. Has your process for writing the different novels you've written, have they been the same? Have they been different? Do you feel like the next thing you're going to write goes by this sort of process you've created for yourself? Mm -hmm. or? I think different books demand a different process. And, uh, and part of the problem I had writing this novel is I couldn't figure out what that process was. I honestly thought I was writing a series of loose novellas. Um, I, you know, I've said it before, the first page I wrote in this novel is now on page 458. Um, which should give you a clue about how I didn't know I have a clue about process. 
I think different characters demand a process. And I think one of the worst things a writer can do is to impose a process on a novel. Because it's the novel that tells you what it wants to, where it wants to go. You don't tell it. I think people write more than anything else because of stuff they want to read. Why are you writing this? Because you didn't like how the character died or you didn't like how, how, how much of a wuss Robin is, so you're going to rewrite him. I was always doing that. I was always drawing comics. I was always um, rewriting storylines. I hated how the Hulk always ended sad, so I'd rewrite every episode where it ended happy. All right, well, guys, thanks for, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. So I write everywhere. I write to school, I write to my offices, I write to the gym. The thing about Minnesota, and particularly St. Paul, which I, I realize, is that a lot of its, let's call it pleasures, kind of sneak up on you. It was great, for example, living in the Matt Groveland area and realizing, oh, I can walk to a bookshop. Um, I can jump on my bike and I'm by a record store. I really, that's already two things I couldn't do in, in Jamaica. I mean, told this is a driving city, but I've been here eight years and I still don't have a car. Hey, how you doing? Hi. I'm all right. I'm gonna get an English fog latte. Okay. So I came to Minnesota and to McAllister because I actually did a Google search for creative writing tenure track professor positions and McAllister was one of the schools that came up. You know, I'm a creative writing professor. I, uh, I teach f fiction and nonfiction mostly, but I am primarily an, sort of an English professor, and, 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 I, and I'm, in some ways I'm very sort of professorial in that I like giving lectures. So I was always writing, but I never took it seriously. I did it in college, undergrad, promptly forgot about it and I went into advertising for like 15 years. I think I just ran into a dead end writing copy. I just kind of went back into writing and that's when I started to take it seriously, not as a professional writer to produce books, but as an art that I needed in my life. You know, I write really risky novels, I write really dark novels, I write really, occasionally, sometimes very violent novels. The three novels and even the short stories I've written just seem to be like ideas sometimes or characters that show up in my head and just refuse to leave. So I, in some ways, accepted it even before it happened that I'd be a kind of a fringe novelist. So to get this kind of, um, critical reception and so on, it is validating. And that's really the kind of thing that spurs you to keep wanting to write. And not that you write for critical praise, but it is an encouragement I can keep doing what I'm doing as opposed to compromising that vision, especially if you're doing really you know, risky work.